Hello and welcome to another Pico TV production. This is the first of a three-part series exploring the Smart Switch range of products. In this film we will look at using the PLS100 Smart Switch Servo Kit to operate a turnout and how to program and set up the servo controls. We also recommend using the Pico Electric's PL202 power supply unit providing a 12 volt DC 2 amp power supply which also has the correct connectors allowing you to connect it directly to the control board. Now before we start we need the right tools to do the job and when you're laying track there's no better set of tools than the track layers tool set the PT100. Right let's get started by identifying all the components in the box. We have a smart switch control board, servo programming board, four servo motors with servo horns and screws, four toggle switches, four servo mounting brackets and four wire linkages plus a bag of other further screws for mounting your devices. This diagram shows you the setup overview and how all the different components are connected together. In this film we are concentrating on an analog installation but we will learn about the PLS135 stationary decoder for DCC setup in the next film. The only external wiring required is for the toggle switches and optional LEDs which can be installed on your layout's control center or mimic board. The connection between the control board servos and remote servo programming boards simply plug them together using the leads and extension leads if required. The terminals and the servos are numbered 1 to 4. The toggle switches connected to the terminals 1 will be operated by servo 1 and so on. The five left hand terminals and the user terminal are for use with the stationary decoder in DCC. Do not plug anything else into them. This diagram shows how to connect up your toggle switches. It is a good idea to connect up the system to test it out and familiarize yourself with it before installing it on your layout. Any settings you change whilst practicing can be reset using the factory reset mode. The control board makes a low humming noise when it is switched on. This is normal, don't worry about it. Push buttons can be used to control the servos instead of toggle switches if you prefer. The system needs telling which type of control device is being used. If you are not using the PL202 then we recommend a minimum DC voltage of 9 volts and a maximum of 25 volts. The circuit boards in the plastic casing can be mounted beneath your baseboard using the 15mm wood screws provided. Fitting the servo horns, they are simply a push fit onto the spindle shaft of the servo and lock it on with a small self-tapping screw. Make sure the horns are aligned centrally to the shaft in relation to the servo. There are various methods for mounting the servos onto the operating turnout blades. The method shown illustrates just two options. Some ingenuity may be required if you are using the servos to power some other types of operational features on layouts or if you're trying to fit them into a restricted space. But you can mount them both above or below your baseboard. Insert the servo into the metal bracket as shown. And lock in place with a pan head machine screw and nut. A mechanical linkage between the servo and the point or feature you wish to operate will be required. The lengths of 0.6mm steel wire are ideal for this. They can be shaped with thin nosed pliers. When mounting a servo or creating a linkage, it may be useful to use the installation mode, which we will cover 
in this next section. Order of programming modes. Each press of the button S3 on the remote servo programming board cycles through the various program modes in the following order. So study the diagram carefully. We will follow the various program modes and details in the following sections. This is the mode in which the system normally operates, whereupon the program settings are saved. Return the system to this mode when not programming. When a dash is displayed on the left of the LED display of the remote servo programming board, such as this or this, the system is in default save mode. The system can be reset to its factory defaults if required. Press button S3 until you see F. Press and hold the S1 and S2 and S3 buttons all simultaneously until FF is displayed. It may take a few attempts and a few seconds. Then the system will restore to factory settings. Press S3 to cycle through the modes to return to the default save mode. Servo installation mode. To activate installation mode, press the button S3 on the remote until the servo programming board displays an L, shown like this on the LED display. After three seconds, all the servos plugged into the smart switch control board will assume and maintain their mid position. Any mechanical linkages can now be attached, ensuring the servo will have equal and enough travel in each direction to have the desired effect. To exit the installation mode, press the button S3 until the servos will return to their previous start-stop positions. You may find that some or all of the servos make a bit of a jittering noise. This means they cannot reach their programming or start or stop positions due to physically being stopped by whatever they are attached to. This is normal. The servos are numbered from 1 to 4 from the right hand side as you look at your control board. Press the buttons on S3 of the remote servo programming board until the numbers of the servos you wish to program are shown in the top left of the display and either 1 start position or 2 stop position is shown on the right. The servo should move to the position being programmed unless it is already there. Use S1 or S2 to adjust the servo start stop position. Each press moves the servo horn only a fraction. Press and hold the servo button to make the servo horn move more quickly. When operating turnouts, the start stop positions need to be set so the turnout blades are in full contact with the stock rail, just prior to the point where the servo starts to make a jittering sound. When finished, Press button 3 to cycle through the modes to return to the default save mode. Setting up your servo speeds. This mode allows you to set the speed of each servo to suit your preferences. In speed setting mode, each servo is assigned a letter. Servo 1 equals A, 2, B, 3, C, 4, D. Press button S3 on the remote servo programming board until you see the letter corresponding to the servo you want to program on the left of the display. Use buttons S1 and S2 to adjust the number on the right to your preferred speed setting. There are nine speed steps. One is the slowest and nine being the fastest. The factory default setting is five. When finished, Press button S3 to cycle through the modes to return to default save mode. The bracket can then be screwed to the baseboard using the two self-tapping screws. Adding route indication lights. Root indication lights that show the status of each servo can be added using a bank of terminals on the right of the smart switch control board. 
These could be used to simply show which way the turnouts are set on the control panel. The servo programming board can be unplugged to store when it is not required, but only remove it once the system is in default save mode. You only need to program the servos once. When the servos have been set to move your turnouts, the system remembers the settings so you don't need to do this each time you operate the layout. Pico Electric Smart Switch is an incredibly versatile system which is not only used on turnouts but can be also used on a whole range of different scenarios on your model railway. Smart Switch can be used in conjunction with ratio signals, security gates, level crossings and barriers. The Pico Electric Smart Switch system is great value for money. For a modest extra cost compared to standard turnout control, you get a whole lot more authenticity and versatility. So what's stopping you from adding more realism and movement to your layout? It's just a flick of a switch, or if switches and mimic boards are not your thing, you can also control this amazing system using DCC command. In the next film, we will be exploring the PLS-135 stationary decoder and demonstrating how to set it up on a popular DCC command system. We hope you found this film helpful in explaining how to use Smart Switch correctly and we look forward to seeing you again on another Pico TV program in the future.